here we are having child care conversations. I'm Chloe from the Child Care Counts Coalition in Wyndham County, Southern Wyndham County, and I'm here with Mel Zen, the owner of Horizon and Mulberry Bush and Claire Kendrick, who is part of the coalition and helping us out. And we are going to talk about how do you start a child care business? So um, we were really excited, Mel, that you could join us to do this. And we're just going to talk and see what happens. So um, why don't we start with how long have you been doing child care? Like how long have you been in the business? Yeah. So I grew up in a living in a home child care. My mother, uh, Judy Rosner, was uh, a home child care provider in Vernon, Vermont for she started when I was born, so it was like 30 something years before she retired. So I grew up with the kids in my space and having to share my toys and <laughs> all of that stuff. Um, and as I became a teenager, uh, I saw a lot of the advocacy work my mom was doing and uh, part of the beginning of Starting Points Network, which I know is called something else more recently, but to me, since it goes that far back, it's still Starting Points Network. Um, so watching her and Sue Clark uh, who's now, they're both since retired from the field, both home child care providers, uh, just get together and go to meetings. And I was, I, once I became old enough, I was volunteering for both of them and then subbing. Um, and I was inspired to sort of start uh, summer camp stuff. My um, cousin-in-law also founded, was a co-founder of the Family Garden. And so once uh, that opened, I worked with them to like help remodel and do parts of the building and saw them like was inspired by women building that and uh, really started off not very confidently running their summer camp program. Like this is what I'm going to do. And so I just jumped in. And so that's sort of how it started. I then got my undergraduate in financial accounting and thought this is not for me I need children and people in my life and <laughs> so I then switched to early ed in college and right out of college I went I worked as a para through college para educator in the public school system and then I was uh, a pre-k teacher at Hinsdale Elementary School in New Hampshire. And after two or three years, lost my job due to a reduction in force. And at that time, my husband and I had just adopted our first child and I didn't know what to do. And I thought, you know what? I want my own preschool in my own house. And I just started digging and questioning and I had all these wonderful women who I could ask mm -hmm. and say, hey, what do you, how did you start this? What do you do? You know, so it's all about building a network to start it. Um, and then in a nutshell, it grew from a home child care, which you have to have first before you can have a licensed child care. So I had that for two years with the goal to become licensed after two years. Um, and then I've since grown to a center and then I ended up helping to save the Mulberry Bush Early Learning Program, which was then the Mulberry Bush Independent School at the retreat uh, in Brattleboro. And then the, where it all started uh, in my home in Vernon, which I no longer live in, I started a third and smaller kind of nature-based infant toddler program there a year ago now. So I have all three. So it's gone over the last, I'm 40. I started when I was like 16 or 17. So wow. that's all I've been doing. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's unusual, um, you know, I think to hear the, um, that you started with financial accounting. Because I think that that is one of the things that really, is daunting to folks like people getting into the field like I love kids I want to be with kids and that business piece is sort of the part that's missing we talk a little bit about how that's helped you and what those of us who are the people who are thinking about this who don't have financial accounting in their background what, what do they need to be thinking about what would be helpful on that business front yeah I think that even though I had that background I still had to look at uh, I remember before we even had all this technology and QuickBooks systems that I've since learned, you have to be open to learning new things, right? So like studying accounting in college was, I realized not for me, but I was able to apply it to like what income comes in and what bills to pay. And again, I leaned on um, through the Starting Points Network then, Billy Slave, she became my mentor. Um, my mother was obviously another mentor. Um, but just looking at, they said, this is, this is how you record stuff so sitting down with somebody who's done it like that's what I now love to do for new directors who aren't sure how to run a program or 
own child care people who want to start one, um, sitting down and, and saying, this is a template and not recreating the wheel. There's information out there. You don't have to feel like, I don't know what I'm doing because you don't at first. Mm -hmm. So it's about saying, hey, Chloe, like I, looking you up online, emailing you, I'm interested in starting a home child care. Like, what are some resources? And that there are people like Chloe, Claire, and myself mm -hmm. um, who can just plug you in, right? To, to especially that intimidating piece, which is like the financial piece. Yeah. Um, so I... I have been blessed that I have access to that. And I was trained um, through one of my expansions. I had a, uh, a loan from Vermont Community Loan Fund. And part of that was having someone mentor me on QuickBooks. Uh -huh. So that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. And I learned the whole software. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I grew, I've actually passed that on to somebody else who's now uh, does bookkeeping for a bunch of local child cares. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's surrounding yourself with people and resources and not being afraid to ask the questions and saying, I don't understand this or I don't know how to do that part. And it's okay to be intimidated. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want you to be intimidated by the children starting one <laughs> or the families, but it's certainly okay to be intimidated by the financial piece and just know that there's lots of us out there to help yeah. anyone who wants to start. Yeah, that's a great point. The, the um, you know, as you think about helping people start a, a business, connecting them with other people who are interested in helping, mentors and, and that network you mentioned, that that really sort of was a foundation for you. And then how do we um, make that accessible, either through the Starting Place Network, which is now the Wyndham Early Childhood Educators Co-op. So that's a really robust group and we can connect people with that for sure. Um, but even being more intentional about that mentoring, you know, maybe that's a, a, an area that we could really think about. Um, I agree. I think having an intentional mentor uh, is really important. Like if someone's interested, because you might not realize you're missing out on pieces or things and having Billy Slate come into my house. And it, like, I remember it was, I had a baby that year, later that first year I started home childcare. I started it not knowing I was going to be having a baby. And I remember how like Billy came into my bedroom, that's where my little tiny desk was. And she sat on my bed and like was mentoring me from there in the space. I hardly had any space. Um, and things on like stars. I was, I didn't know anything about stars then. And it was listening, walking, help, helping, trusting someone, right? To walk me through this process and say, this is what you do next. This is what you do next. Um, and it was, it was that and many different people helping through all the different parts. Yes. Yeah. It's really, really important. Let's talk a little bit about licensing because I think, or, uh, you know, that seems daunting also. I think people might look at the regulations and be like, is my house going to even work? Am I going to have to put a ton of money in or a ton of changes? Um, what was your experience around that? So like when you started your very first program and Billy was in there in your bedroom helping you sort of sort through stuff, did you have to do a lot of work and... Yeah, so licensing was intimidating at first, and that was before we got a much thicker version of licensing. So I can imagine that can be really intimidating to people right now as well. Uh, the licensors were always great to work with. So um, I sat down, I believe Elaine Crawford has always been my licensor, except we had a little few years in there where it was a woman named Sarah. But just sitting down and saying, what do I do? So they'll also answer your questions. These, these are, read the regulations, and they don't all make sense at first, but you can ask questions and they'll go through your house and say, this is what you need. Um, there's also many people in the area throughout Vermont, in any, any county, where someone who has home child care can come just say, hey, come over. Like, what is it like for you? How did you start? What, what, what do I have to look at in my house? Because every house is different. Uh, starting a home child care is much simpler than trying to have a licensed home program. Oh. Um, which just brings into account more fire safety, more they need to septic design and, and flow for the number of children. A licensed home allows 12 children in your home with up to another helper. So um, that is a, that's separate, but and you have to start with a home child care anyways before you can consider that. So it gives you two years to really learn licensing regulations for home-based child care. Mm -hmm. um, and reading and marking. I don't know this, like asking questions in it. There are no dumb questions. Like mm -hmm. the only dumb questions are those we don't ask. And it's really true because you might miss something that doesn't make sense, but there's lots of us who can help make sense. Mm -hmm. um, 
of it for whomever needs it. And Elaine, like, I, I email her questions still now about certain things. And she responds, um, you can call the licensor of the day. Anyone can call the licensor of the day. If you have a question and you're just learning the regulations, you can just call and say, can you explain this regulation to me? Um, so I think that can feel a bit intimidating. And as far as like being in your house, um, it's just safety. It's smart. It's if you have a wood stove, you're going to need a gate uh, a certain distance away. If you have a fence near a road, the slats have to be a certain distance. It, just taking into con consideration that you are providing a safe environment for other children. Um, and then there's the record check piece. You have to have a clear record check because you can't care for other people's kids without that. Um, but it really walks you through what to do in each specific order. And I would say that I would say six months is the best timeline to take to open a program, at least six months. I think anyone could do it in three if they're really go a go-getter and they're really gonna plug in and they're gonna ask the questions and they're gonna reach out. But I think six months is like, hey, Chloe, hey, Mel's in, hey, whomever is a mentor or, you know, up and coming in childcare in your community in Vermont, like I would say going, you know, going to them and saying like, what, where can I start? And then we can sort of mm -hmm. point people in whichever direction. It's really important that we get more childcare and especially home programs because people are really looking for that intimate home program setting. When thinking about it's, uh, you know, I think it's a lot easier, it's uh, easier to set up a home-based Send, you know, home-based care and a registered home than a center. Like standing up a center is a lot of work, but, you know, yeah. getting started small. And I think that that's our best bet for help encouraging people to do that. That's our best bet for expanding the slots and the capacity in this community. Um, yeah. And, you know, I have to, you know, just to say, I think I bet there are people out there who are taking care of their own kids and could actually, you know, want their kids to play with other kids and want yeah. some income. And I think, you know, it just seems in terms of, and it's really, um, I think the other thing, like it's really entrepreneurial, right? It's really, really small women owned businesses and that, that frame. And so how can we help, um, or typically women, how can we help uh, get resources? So you mentioned um, a loan from the Vermont Community Loan Fund um, and that there was really technical assistance around that, that somebody, part of that was, um, so that sounds like a, that was a good resource. Which, what did you use that one for? So I used that resource when I was ready to become a licensed home and I needed to expand my septic uh, design. Yep, I used that along with um, Let's Grow Kids, their Make Way for Kids grant in the very beginning. One of their first rounds of doing that uh, helped that space. And now, now that space is now a center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one's living there. It's a center. It's a small center because I love the feel of a home child care. Like you're just caring for kids in your house, you know? And, and so that's why I kind of brought it back to being in that space. It's a quiet, intimate, doesn't really have a center feel. It more as like a home child care feel, which is just a few more kids and more staff. But um, I think, Chloe, what you said really resonated with me when you said people are probably home with their own kids. Child care is expensive. And so often, and especially out of the layer of the pandemic on top of it, to be home in the comfort of your own home, where you can clean your own home, if you're, you know, and you can, all that stuff, like, to, to be able to watch your own children, uh, and there's some regulations around that, if anyone's considering it, that your own children either do or don't count in certain ratios, uh, depending on their ages, so you can have a certain number plus your own. Um, and then there's after school kids, which increase your number in the afternoon if you want people to come off the bus. Um, but the idea of being home and with my, I wasn't expecting to have a baby, <laughs> and uh, caring for that baby and two other babies, but I had six children, my son, I had two other, uh, one year old and another, just almost two. And then I had four kids um, and I had someone helping me then because I had just had a baby. But I just remember the joy of like, I sat, I was nursing, I was giving this baby a bottle next to me, you know, the, and the kids were, I was laughing with them running outside, like, well, we're all just like enjoying life. And my child has grown up to be so empathetic of, yes, he has his own stuff he didn't have to share, but he also realized like the bigger kids in a home childcare setting, like the four-year-old would help him when he was two. 
We're going to go for a walk. I think we help each other. And he learns through that. And he is now an empathetic, lovely nine-year-old. And I think a lot of it is due to starting in having to share mom and having to share, you know, the love of just like one big family. Mm-hmm. And that was Claire put together some questions for us, Claire. And I thought too, um, and one of those, like, what, what is one of the, one of the things you love, like in deciding and um, to open one. And then one of the, like, a really good positive thing is like, it's a, it's a, it, it takes a village to raise our own kids. When you have a child care in your own home, you end up having this beautiful village of all these other families and you can have potluck and you can, people can stay. And like, I remember I had two moms who would come at the same time and nurse and they would stay till the end of the day and they would nurse and I would nurse and the three of us would sit and we would just talk and learn from each other. And it was just always so awesome. Um, so it's, if you're feeling isolated after this pandemic too, and you're home with your kids and you want to make some money, like, honestly, this is the time. Like, now is the time to do it because it is perfectly bonding. You'll have, if you do it in your own home child care, you're your boss. So you can say, you know what? We had an exposure to COVID. We're going to close this week, mm-hmm. right? Like you, you get to make those decisions based around what is happening in the world. Mm-hmm. So I just, I'm, I sometimes miss that, mm-hmm. piece, right? Because it was just such an awesome community. Yeah. That's so great. And so then on the flip side, what were, um, what are some challenges or what were the, what would you give warnings about in terms of, uh, you know, I think it was great. You pointed out like really this is all about asking questions and being curious and exploring. So, you know, um, just ask a lot of questions and I'm guessing there were some things that are, Oh, here, here are the top five things to watch out for that really start here because it's going to get more complicated. What, what, would, what rises to the top for you around that challenge? So a few of the top things are boundaries. It's your home. And it's hard to ask people to leave when you're ready at 4.30 or 5 or whenever you're closing to be like, I'm leaving, I have an appointment, or you can nurse outside, but I'm locking my door. Um, boundaries is really big because you do become a family. And curtailed on that one is you have to create healthy boundaries and say, this is the amount of money that I charge and you have to collect payment. Um, and that can feel tricky. So there's there's some great ways out there. I just shifted to using Bright Wheel, which is a childcare app. So I bill ahead of time. So bill the first of the month. Families have to pay. And so then I'm no longer, I'm not chasing money typically. Um, there's also remembering to have healthy boundaries and that you can expand that. And you can say, oh, this family's really struggling. You're the one who gets to say, listen, you can just pay half now, pay half in two weeks. So there's, so there's beauty to that too. Um, but it, so boundaries is, is really one of the biggest challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, and that takes, again, kind of networking with other providers to see what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing? How are you collecting? Because that feels yucky, that piece. Um, and this parent is late again, and I have to take my kid to soccer. <laughs> and it, it, as a home child care, you likely have car seats in a van, and then you have to tell that parent, like, I let, I'm leaving, and you're not here, so they have to come get their kid with you. I mean, that happens. <laughs> um so the other piece, again, I think because they're sort of all wrapped up in boundaries, it's your space. So when I grew up watching my mom, she's very different from how like Sue Clark ran hers. Sue had this beautiful coat area, but then you would go down the stairs and her whole childcare was down in her basement. For most of the time I was with her, it wasn't always like that. And um, Ellie Mayan and another person who I grew up helping in summers again, the space that is separate. So if it's in a basement, you have to have different access points for fire safety and things, but um, having a space that is separate is really important. My mother did it differently. The childcare came out, there's a playroom. She pulled, she moved the coffee table and put books out and she set it up every single day. And at 5 p.m. every single day, it all, we all, it all went away. And it looks just like my mother's house. Like you would never have known there was a childcare in there. So there's that, there's different flows with what works for you. We ended up in a, we had a small house, like 1300 square feet when I started mine. And it, 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 we lived in the childcare, we lived in the preschool, like the kids napped in my kid's room and there was just, we lived in it. And that was challenging. That's one of the reasons why I did move to a center to move it out of the house. Um, So yeah, just, being mindful of your space and what works for you can be a challenge. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wrote down that might be a challenge. 
Um, Is there anything particularly like around licensing or fire safety or money besides collecting money? Like some of those concrete, you know. Yeah, in the um, gosh, in the beginning. Yeah, I think it can feel tricky setting up a business in the beginning. How do I acquire the things that I need? The beauty of a home child care is also that you can ask families and you can say like, I'm looking for a high chair to be donated. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting this, just reach out to your community. If you don't have families signing up first, I, before my space was even, before I even started, I had six families enrolled. Like, and that was, I lost my job in May and I opened in September for home child care. So I just had been in the community enough, like not even doing childcare, but just known that I was able to get people, people want good home childcare too. Yeah. Like they want to just trust with their kids. So um, I think that I was fortunate to not have too many obstacles with licensing mm -hmm. because I have the people in my life to answer all the questions. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine someone being completely alone and opening those, that book could freeze and be like, no, 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 like I'm not doing this, this is my house. I have to license my house. Um, it's different. A licensed home child care is technically a licensed building. It's public. A home child care is not. So although if licensing shows up, you have to let them in, um, it's still your home. So it's not a public building. So there's like some different pieces and I might be getting that wrong. It might be like if you go over a certain number oh. as a licensed home or a center, then it's a public building. Um, oh. There's different, there's things like that that take some time to learn. Um, I think a challenge is learning the regulations. Mm -hmm. like there are a lot of regulations, uh, mostly safety and ratio and how many kids you can have and how to, how to help them nap safely. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of safety stuff like that. So that can, you know, you can feel like there are barriers. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I encourage anyone thinking of opening their own business to just look at it one piece at a time. Mm. And when you hit something you don't understand, write a note, like stick a sticky note on there and then sit down with licensing and ask, say, can I just have a visit? Like, can I go over these? Mm -hmm. And there are people who will explain it. Um, and it's really pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Again, I would look, I would encourage anyone to take at least six months time from the start of wanting to open until opening mm -hmm. um, to make sure you're really ready. And in the process, you don't change your mind, which is okay. But um, I think it takes at least six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other barriers? I think, you no, know, fire safety, unless you're having something in like a basement, you know, and then you need sprinklers. If it's a center, I think, I'm not sure. Home stuff mm -hmm. is needed. Lots of people don't use that area of their house unless there's two exits. And um, fire will come and they'll say, hey, this is what you gotta do if you have to do anything. You know, you need to have a fire extinguisher. You need to have, there's a lot of common sense things that yeah. you just walk through. Um, I think, I'm trying to think if there's any other barriers. I think finding the right way to track finances for you. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's mind works differently mm -hmm. and it's your business. So you're tracking the finances. Um, there's a lot of resources out there, especially on the web of how to do it, um, how to open your own. Yeah. And I think part of the, um, part of what we hope to do is, uh, so like, you know, when you search the web, it's this like onslaught of information. So how can we maybe help curate a little bit or point in the right direction? And again, identify people locally. Like, so we've even started thinking about small business association or small business loans and people, technical assistance from, entities that are supposed to help people start small businesses because they, mm -hmm. I think sometimes, um, you know, childcare gets put in its own bucket and, and it's a small business. So let's, you know, figure out how to, how to connect people to loans or, um, you know, those folks who typically do this anyway. So, well, yeah. so it's like both ends. Like, and, and Vermont, the state of Vermont has a lot of small business yeah. support and they have a lot of women led business yeah. support. Yeah. 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 And actually I just, um, as a little side note, the Vermont Community Foundation has the Vermont Women's Fund, and I think they are going to be very interested in helping women start small businesses. So um, for us, I mean, in Vermont, again, but it would be great if in our region we could attract some of that money. So just that's on the radar for me is how can we help people get the resources they need? And it's not always a lot of money, right? So we used to have the quality fund. 
um, through the United Way that could be for, you know, helping small expenses for, to help programs maintain their stars or their quality, um, you know, ratings or, you know, improve. And I think we could stand up something like that again, like use the Elizabeth Christie Fund of the Child Care Council Coalition to maybe next time raise money to help people start a business, right? There are different ways to target yeah. those resources, so. Yeah, I think yes. some of the most expensive resources you need are, you're, you have to have a computer, you know, okay. to really, to, to connect and yeah. to run a business in this day and age. Yeah. Um, and so I think ensuring that people who are looking to start their own small child care also have access if they don't already have one and uh, ways to get technology quickly into their hands so that they do they can access a spreadsheet to track income and expenses and things like that or QuickBooks if they want to upload it on there or um, there are you can pay you can you can pay people to run your business part for you if you don't want to deal with the numbers. Sure. And it's not super expensive because it doesn't take them as many hours to do the things. Right. It might be like passing that thing on yeah. that will ease your mind in opening home childcare. Um, yeah. And to, like tag sales. Like we when we started, we tag sailed puzzles, we tag sailed stuffed animals, we like dress up, like just look for free stuff, go out to tag sales. You can you can start it up for we're pretty yeah. cheap that way with some decent stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, yeah, anything we haven't covered that you think somebody considering opening a business in their home would want to know or think about or some last little bit of advice? I think you need to ask yourself questions like with gas prices, do I want a short commute? Like. You have none. People are driving to you. <laughs> um, and do you enjoy children? Because you need to enjoy children. It can be really challenging in moments when you're alone and you have a crying baby who you're holding and a toddler tantruming and two kids waiting for lunch. You need to remember to breathe. You need to remember to talk to the kids and just be like, I am having a hard time right now. Oh my goodness. Look at all this that's happening. Because sometimes you do have that alone factor, which is why networking is really important and finding other people in home child care. Um, just to just call, set up your FaceTime, and be like, hey, look at all the kids. Like, we're, we're struggling over here for a minute, you know? Um, so I think that's important. You have to enjoy children. You have to like helping others because what you're doing is helping families. Um, you're helping yourself to start a business and to have good income coming into your family. Um, to have the flexibility to say, this is our, this is my calendar. Like we're closed for two weeks in July and that's okay because that's your family vacation and you're closed for Christmas and decide making those decisions. So you get your own flexibility um, and you have to be able, there ha you have to be creative in some aspect because it's all in process. <laughs> you, you are, you don't know what's going to happen <laughs> from moment to moment with the kids or the families or you know, parents get divorced and you're helping support that in your home or you're helping, a, you know, a family in crisis or um, someone who's has a parent who, who you know, there needs more help. And you have, there's so many scenarios that you really do have to know how to improv and be creative like, and just breathe through all of it. So I think if, if those are all things people are looking for, um, now is the time to just open yeah. the child care. Try it. I mean, the worst case scenario is you try it right. and you're like, this isn't for me. And you can work to let families know. But best case scenario, you put like this great, awesome thing in your house and uh, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know?